Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to welcome you back to yet another episode of our Wigan Athletic Road to Glory here on FIFA 16 career mode. Today we are of course still in the summer transfer window at the start of our first Barclays Premier League campaign. Last time out we uh, drew against Stoke, it was a pretty decent episode, I guess pretty decent result. Uh, we made some signings as well, we drew against Stoke, it could have been a win but we were denied thanks to a late Marko Arnautovic goal. Uh, which meant, unfortunately, we only grabbed the one point. But we made some transfers. We're also looking to make another one as well. We signed Karl Ihan last time, I do believe. Uh, but this time, we're hoping to pull off the signing of this man, Nabi Keita. You guys decided that this was a defensive midfielder that you wanted me to pursue. He looks like a pretty decent player, does the African midfielder from Red Bull Salzburg. So we'll try and sign him. Sam Morsey will be staying at the club as well. You guys decided, uh, well, hopefully, uh, you guys decided... Uh, that he should stay, but it was quite close, so we might listen to any offers that we get. Nevertheless, it is now time to get into the first game of today's episode instantly, and it's a tough test against Manchester United away from home and Old Trafford. Here you can see the squad in the background, the new signing for ourselves, which is Khan Ihan, is starting this game, and uh, Manchester United have got a new signing of their own starting and making his debut, that is Hal Palinha. But into the sixth minute, and Bastian Schweinsteiger has given away a free kick and earned himself a yellow card by fouling Bartosz Kapuska. Emir Hughes will take it short to find Kapuska, who has a bit of space actually to unleash a strike, he goes for it! And he finds the bottom corner, Bartosz Kapuska has scored, but the camera angle is quite strange, which would indicate there's been some sort of deflection, but we lead after just seven minutes, Kapuska with a wonderful goal. Here you can see the replay, Wayne Rooney though sliding in, and I think the game has given it as an own goal for Wayne Rooney, so there must have been some sort of deflection, I see that as quite harsh, it looks as if Kapuska had got the goal himself. United though going forward and straight away have equalised, well, there's been there's been a sort of 18 minutes or something between, but the next highlight in João Palinha, their, uh, their debutant having signed from Sporting Lisbon has scored a wonderful goal, Alban Lafont with no chance, and the joy of Kabuska's long range effort was short lived because Man United have gone up the other end and have scored a goal of their own, 10 minutes later Will Griggs set away by Kapuska but it's a simple catch for Victor Valdez just plucking the ball out of the air. Into the second half now, Reese James found himself on the edge. The area's found Oil Chan in a wonderful position, and Oil Chan, our smiley assassin Turkish winger, has flipping scored again. Victor Valdez will potentially feel as if he could have done better. It's beaten him at the near post. Reese James in a very advanced position, and our Turkish winger has done the business. And we now lead 2 1, but that, that lead is under threat as Wayne Rooney tries to get a goal at the right end, but hits the woodwork, smacking the ball off the crossbar. Going forward ourselves now with 11 minutes to go. Valdez forced uh, into action by Kemar Roof. And now United throwing people forward. Under Herrera has been found by Juan Mata. He goes for the chip. But Alban Lafont is up to the task with eight minutes to go. United putting massive amounts of pressure on. And Herrera with a cheeky effort. We are now going on the counter-attack. Kemar Roof's won the ball off Bill Jones. There's a square potential. He goes for the shot. It's hit both posts, but it's found Oil Chan. Nevertheless... And, uh, wow, well, I mean, that was a bit lucky, I suppose, in the end. Oil Chan in the perfect position after Kemar Roof hits both posts to give us a two-goal lead. And that is how the game ends. 3-1 victory for ourselves away from home against Manchester United at Old Trafford. Not a bad result whatsoever. Kapuska gets man of the match, but a very good result there. Oil Chan, of course, scoring two goals, a very... A very fortuitous one right at the end after the chance for Kemar Roof was spurned, but a goal nonetheless. As you can see in the background, uh, you guys of course had the choice between Nabi Keita, Kyla Bethelio and Jefferson Lerma. Atleti Atletico Wheeler, sorry, or Atletico Wheeler, uh, decided they were going to reject our offer, which basically meant we couldn't sign him anyway because we didn't have enough money. Uh, so thankfully you guys did choose Nabi Keita in the end. Uh, uh, Red Bull Salzburg actually accepted our £4 million bid for the Guinean central midfielder. So we're going to go ahead and... And, or I think he's from Mali. Is he from Mali or Guinea? I can't remember. Um, we're going to go ahead and make a contract offer, and he's duly accepted that as well. So it looks as if we're going to sign Nabi K to the 74 overall 22 year old central midfielder, who's a lot like N'Golo Kante, for £4 million plus 25k in wages for the player himself. Going to go ahead and accept that offer, which means we're now down to £6 million in terms of a transfer budget. But you can see his stats, his physicals are very good 90 balance, 88 stamina, pretty decent acceleration speed sprint speed, agility and reactions, as well as 81 interceptions and 81 vision as well. So good passing, good uh, tackling ability, although his slide tackling and stand tackling will need to be trained, but crucially very good stamina and balance as well. So going 
Uh, moving on from that, Naby Keita has joined the club then. That's a very nice signing for £4 million. That it seems like somewhat of a bargain. We're going to go ahead and change our formation. Because I feel as if our strikers have been struggling somewhat to get into games. Will Grigg and Kemar Roof have been struggling quite a lot to get into games when they're playing up front on their own. So we're changing from a 4-3-3 to a 4-1-2-1-2 with Emir Hughes giving up his starting 11 place for Kem uh, for Kemar Roof. Which means we're going to have to buy another striker because we only have two out and out strikers in the entire squad. Um, and we're using both of them at the same time uh, with this new formation. Uh, talking about players that we need, we obviously need a new striker now, uh, so we'll try and make that signing at some point. But we also need a backup left back. Rhys James is our only left back in the entire side, so we're going to go ahead and make a bid for this man, Rico Henry. Initially putting in a bid of 500k plus Dan Byrne, but then that is rejected and we have to make a bid of 800k plus Dan Byrne. The centre-back, we've got in a pre-contract agreement, but it hasn't exactly made a massive impact on the squad. We've got a lot of centre-backs already depth-wise. We need Rico Henry a lot more than we need Dan Burns. We're going to make that improved bid. But now it's time for the second game of today's episode against Aston Villa and it signals a debut for this man, Naby Keita, the man that you guys chose to be our new defensive midfielder with Sam Morsey with, uh, making way and dropping to the bench. He seems like a very diminutive player but one that gets around a lot, runs around a lot crucially and uh, we'll hopefully do a bit of a Mendy, Anampolis Mendy and Golo Kante job in the middle of the park. Here is confirmation that it is in fact his debut uh, in this third Barclays Premier League game of season number three. Here you can see on the screen, having made his transfer, completed his transfer from Austrian side Red Bull Salzburg for four million pounds. It seems like somewhat of a snip, especially seeing as he's quite young. We can train some attributes into him and hopefully grow his overall. Here you can see the squad in the background just confirming as well that we've changed formation from a 4-3-3 to a 4-1-2-1-2 wide. Uh, uh, remaining uh, with wingers, so Doolan and Oil Chan that's still in the side, but now two strikers up front, one of which has hopefully given us the lead, but unfortunately he was offside. Kemar Roof with a lovely finish after the cross into the box from Oil Chan. But unfortunately, he was offside. Just a few minutes later, Mikel Doolan's going to swing a ball into the box. He's onto the head of Bartosz Kapuska. And what a header that is from the Polish midfielder. He's not exactly someone that you sort of associate with heading ability and jumping, but he leapt like a salmon. And he's nodded the ball into the top right corner. That is an astonishing header and a very rare goal uh, directly from a corner. So fair play, Kapuska. He's looking like a bit of a um, a bit of a complete package at the moment now with uh, aerial ability as well. Challenging Kieran Clark there a moment ago and from the resulting corner. It's into the box, headed away by Jordan Amavi. Only as far as Kate looking for a spectacular first goal. It's bouncing around the area, but it does fall to the Aston Villa goalkeeper after the shot from Will Grigg. And uh, the rest of the first half really turned into the Naby Keita show. Uh, a good challenge there on Andrissa Gay, even winning some stuff there in the air as well, despite only being about 5 foot 8. He won the ball back there as well, but then ended up actually tripping over Khan Ihan. Thankfully, the shot from Jordan Ayew is comfortably saved by Alban Lafont after the initial very good defending once again from Keita. So it looks like a very good signing so far. We, though, are playing it out from the back, and this is some wonderful passing play. Kapuska involved, Naby Keita himself involved, Dooland, uh, Roof. Now it's found Will Grigg, who's slowed down slightly by Mika Richards, but still finds Kemar Roof in the centre. Kapuska was in the centre as well for another pass but unfortunately the English striker didn't quite see him and Kapuska is just everywhere making things happen wonderful long shot there as well but a good save from the Aston Villa goalkeeper Villa now throwing players forward Kemar Roof is going forward he's found Emir Hughes off the bench can he score no he cannot because the Aston Villa goalkeeper is up to the task we're trying to double our lead and now into injury time Reese James sees Yannick Vilcher also off the bench can he grab our second no he cannot either because the Aston Villa goalkeeper once again makes a wonderful save and in the end we win the game 1-0. It was a very comfortable match in the end. I mean realistically uh, the scoreline not really doing our performance justice. We ra we absolutely like ran riot in that game. Dominated the game. Reese James gets man of the match. Good ratings as well for Dooland, for Iorfa and of course Bartos Kabuska who, who won the game for us. But of course also Naby Keita on his debut making some sort of I guess underrated challenges just stopping the play and also running around a lot and harassing uh, the other team. But a good debut for him. Hopefully he continues to perform like he did just then. Uh, I alluded to it earlier. We do need another striker though. We only have two out-and-out uh, -out strikers in the squad. You can see some of the ones that we're looking at in the background. The likes of Spalvis, Vincent Janssen, uh, Robert Berich, Moses Simon. Uh, we also had Andre Gray, the Burnley striker a moment ago. Gonchalo Pacencia uh, from, or Pacencia I think, from Porto. And also Lukas Wolinski from Polish side Pogon Czechin. 
Uh, so we're looking at quite a lot of strikers here. As I mentioned, we do only have two out-and-out -out strikers, and that's Kemar Roof and Will Grigg in the entire squad. So we need at least one striker to come in and provide some squad depth, and even challenge those guys for starting 11 places. We want some good positive competition in the squad between players to make sure they perform better, to, you know, to make sure that they're staying in the starting 11. Uh, we're making some bids, though. Uh, for these guys, the first of which was Vincent Janssen. We also had a look at Andre Gray, and uh, then after that we had a look at, I think it was Gonzalo Pachencha, and also Lucas Volinsky. We may look at Lucas Spalvis later on, but we're certainly ending our interest in Moses Simon and Robert Berich. The inquiries that we got back from the teams that they play for were far too high. San Etienne wanted 11 million for Robert Berich, which is we just don't have. It's not that we wouldn't be willing to pay for him, we just don't have uh, anywhere near 11 million to be able to make uh, a bid. So we're going to go ahead and make some uh, some bids for the players. You'll have seen them in the background. I think 2.3 for Pachencha, 3.5 for Andre Gray. We're making a 4.5 bid here. Uh, sorry, 3.7 bid for Zvolinski. And I think we made like a 5 million bid or something for Vincent Janssen of Azel Almar. Here's just confirmation though. These are the four strikers we are going to look at. Uh, I will also ask you guys to participate in a vote once again. So you guys can choose which striker you want me to buy. Lucas Spalvis will also be in that vote, although we haven't actually made a bid for him yet. Uh, because I thought we were going to get priced out, but actually we may just about have enough money uh, for him. So in the description, there will be a vote. Uh, you can also see their Ultra FIFA profiles in the description as well to help you make their deci uh, your decision, uh, so you can see just how good they are, what their potentials are, and uh, stuff like that. But then, of course, go and vote either Pachencha, Andre Gray, Lucas Spalvis, Vincent Janssen, and uh, Lucas Volinsky will be the choices. You can check their so FIFA profile, sorry, Ultra FIFA profiles, and see how good they are. In the background, we are just quickly simming a Capital One Cup tie. It's like the second round or the first round or something, so I didn't really feel the need to play it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and win the game 2-0, pretty comfortable in the end. Mikel Duland and Bartosz Kapuska, the goal scorers. Also, a few players coming into the side, the likes of Emir Hughes, Jason Pierce, and uh, a few others as well. But unfortunately, we actually got an injury uh, to Dominic Iorfa, and it's a pretty big one as well. He's out with a broken rib for three months. Now, we do have replacements for him. We've got Donovan Daniels, who can play as a right-back. Of course, James Bree, the ex-Barnsley right-back, he can come in and replace Dominic Iorfa for that period, but that is quite a big loss. The 75 overall right back will be out for three months, so a big injury unfortunately there. Here you can see, just to conclude things, uh, you can see that we got word back about our initial transfers or transfer offers for these players. Uh, Lucas Volinsky's side, they rejected the offer, they want a little bit more money. Uh, Porto actually accepted our £2.3 million bid for Gonzalo Pachencha, which is, I think I'm pronouncing that right by the way, I'm not entirely sure. If there's anyone who's Portuguese who's watching this video, just let me know to see if I, just let me, let me know to, to, to see if I'm actually pronouncing it right. Uh, Andre Gray, unfortunately our bid for him was rejected by Burnley, they want a bit more money. Azel Altmar want more money as well for uh, Vincent Janssen. Uh, but Walsall actually accepted our bid as well for Rico Henry of 800k plus Dan Byrne. But regrettably, as you're going to see in a moment, we actually don't have the money uh, to be able to pull off the Rico Henry and the whatever striker that we get bid uh, or, or deals. Sorry, we don't have enough money to, to pull both of them off. Uh, so we might have to listen to some offers for other players. So the likes of maybe Tim Chow, Sam Morsey, who are a little bit expendable in the squad. I know you guys voted for me to keep Sam Morsey, but it was quite a close vote. And if we get a ridiculous bid for him, I'm going to go ahead and accept it, because we need a striker far more than we need Sam Morsey at this point. We've got loads, we're stacked in the centre mid position. We've got so many centre midfielders, whereas we've only got two strikers. So if we get a bid for Sam Morsey, I will, you know, counter offer it to make sure we can get as much money as we can out of the deal. Hopefully, we can go ahead and make a striker signing. Don't forget to vote on that in the straw poll in the description as well. And hopefully we can sign Rico Henry, the backup left back as well next time where we'll be going to transfer deadline day. So it'll be the end of the transfer window next episode. You guys can vote on what striker I buy. We'll hopefully also buy Rico Henry as well, as I just mentioned. And of course, we'll probably have about two or three, maybe even four games for you uh, next episode as well. But that is about it from me. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Feel free to hit the likes button if you did. Subscribe if you're new around here as well. And comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.